Okay, so in order to use um, the net logo, there's a couple of things you need to be familiar with. Um, some of this will be very familiar to you, some of it won't be, but I just thought I'd give you a little video. So remember, so a couple things here. So E is enzyme, okay? Remember, you mix the enzyme and the substrate, which is S, okay? Um, which is a substrate. And when they match up correctly, they form what we call the enzyme substrate complex. Okay. And then if that's the correct orientation and so forth, then a chemical reaction occurs and you end up with the enzyme here and the product. Okay. Now there's a whole bunch of chemistry involved here that you guys don't need to worry about, but for this lab, some, knowing some of it might be helpful, okay? So the first thing is, notice here I got two arrows. I got one going this way, and I have one going this way, okay? This reaction is reversible, okay? So it can go either way, reversible. Um, it can go either way. So what happens is sometimes these match up, but for whatever reason, the reaction doesn't occur and they break back apart, okay? Now that just depends a lot on the enzyme. So we have what we call rate constants. So these are things that are generally fixed for each enzyme, okay? So there's a constant about how we go from ES, from the enzyme substrate to the enzyme substrate complex. That's called K sub uh, C. Now KD is going back the other way, okay? So for whatever reason, it goes back the other way. Um, maybe there's just not enough energy, maybe the, the angle, the orientation wasn't exactly perfect, but it doesn't work. So, and then the last one is a KR. Now notice this only goes one way, okay? Because remember, once, once this reaction happens, this one is, non-reversible. Let's see if I can spell it right this time. Nope. Uh, this one's non-reversible. So you can't, once you have the products, you can't go back to the substrates. Okay. So that's why we don't have the other one, but this one, depending on the enzyme, it can go back and forth. Okay. So basically all of these factors, there's a whole bunch of fun, um, chemistry equations to figure that out. But from that, you can figure out the velocity of a reaction or the rate of the reaction. Okay. Um, and we call this a Michaelis-Minton curve. Now, so you, you can make a plot of this and you can have substrate concentration down here. You could change that concentration and you kind of get this very familiar looking graph that goes up and then it becomes constant and you guys should be able to explain why that happens. Okay. It shouldn't be a surprise at this point. So I just wanted to point out that and those explanations there. So for your lab, for example, if you watch the net logo one, I showed you the examples with sub substrate concentration, right? That is boring um, to explore, right? You know the answer already. Um, so again, if you're not confident about lab reports, go with that one. But you could adjust these values and see what happens. Or um, there's also the idea of an inhibitor. You could, uh, you could look at the inhibitor and explore that concept too and say, oh, I wonder what happens when I add an inhibitor to this reaction. There's a lot of things you can explore and NetLogo gives you those options, right? So if you're looking here, um, if you're looking 